Labon, um, which is an international law firm in the practice group Technology, Media and Telecommunication, and, and found it a uh, lot in my own law firm. I, I have a lot of, quite a lot of experience in, in international data protection matters and IT contract drafting and negotiation. And I'm looking forward to talking about cloud computing and data protection in the EU within the next um, 45 minutes. The presentation will have three major parts. Uh, the first one is a general introduction to the EU data protection directive and uh, relevant terms for, for cloud computing in that directive. The second part is about the requirements that the EU directive state for cloud computing contracts and in relation to data security measures. And the last part concerns the data exports to third countries, uh, which is a special requirement if companies in the EU um, export data to, to companies outside the, the European Union. So this is in particular relevant for all cloud computing providers that are established in the US, India, or somewhere else outside the EU. So let me first give you a short introduction to the EU Data Protection Directive. When I'm talking about the directive, then I refer to the to the EU Data Protection Directive 9546 EC on the protection of individuals with regard to the processing of personal data and on the free movement of such data. That's the official title of that um, directive. There is another directive dealing with data protection in the European Union. This is um, the directive with number 9766 concerning the processing of personal data and the protection of privacy in the communication sector. And this directive is mainly addressed to providers of telecommunication uh, networks and services, um, but uh, this directive is not uh, relevant for cloud providers since um, in a typical um, cloud computing environment, the, the customer is responsible for the interconnection uh, for the internet connection to the to the server of the provider. So we will focus here on, on Directive 9546. The Data Protection Directive creates a harmonized framework uh, for the national data protection laws in the European Union, but as a directive, it is not directly binding upon companies or individuals. Um, rather, it obliges the member states in the European Union to enact respective national legislation and transform the provisions of the directive into their national laws. Directive leaves room to the member states for different implementations, so the, the wording of the national laws are not um, new translations of the, of the directive. Um, for example, the national requirement to to notify or register data processing with their national data protection authority differs considerably throughout the European Union. So the implementation, the various jurisdictions um, vary. However, the uh, directive is a is a good document to look at to have a general understanding of the um, data protection landscape in the European Union. In addition to the different implementations uh, into national laws, the, the terms of the directive, for example, on personal data, are interpreted uh, by local authorities and courts in the various member states differently. So, um, again, data protection laws in the European Union look different. So let's have a look at the topics that the data protection directive covers and uh, that are relevant for cloud computing contracts. First, the directive contains some definition on important terms. 
we will have a look at a uh, term that are relevant for cloud computing in the next slide um, because terms like personal processing, personal data or processing are important to understand um, how the how the directive affects providers and customers of, of cloud services. The directive also contains 